10,000 plus Indian students studying in Germany. Strong collaboration capabilities in engineering, space and defense sectors. Germany and India together equals a digital tomorrow. An innovation-led collaboration, a vibrant, dynamic and economic relationship. Germany for India, seventh largest FDI investor, second biggest partner in science and technology, sixth largest trading partner and largest in Europe. 1,265 German units in India, 35 software-led German R&D centers, 1,600 Indo-German collaborations, over 600 joint ventures. India for Germany, 150 plus Indian firms in Germany, strong IT footprint across seven German cities, second largest investor in German middle stand firms, 10,000 plus Indian students studying in Germany, strong collaboration capabilities in engineering, space and defense sectors, Germany and India together equals a digital tomorrow. scenarios be reconstructed? Yes. Can high-end seating comfort be evaluated? Yes. With the next-gen mathematical human body model. A virtual human that has bones, internal organs, ligaments and muscles. That reacts like a human being. And helps predict injury when placed in a car crash simulation. Building real life. The future of manufacturing reshaped at the intersection of the physical and digital worlds. Industry 4.0 provides the perfect opportunity to bring the best in German manufacturing and the strengths of India's software to create new possibilities for manufacturers, Infosys and the Institute for Industrial Management, FIR, University of Aachen, Germany, together spearheaded the world's first in-depth industry 4.0 readiness study. Powered by design thinking philosophy, the survey shows that 85% will embrace the Industry 4.0 methodology by 2020. Infosys has developed a suite of solutions and products and together with an ecosystem of partners is accelerating Industry 4.0 adoption. Helping manufacturers chart new paths by increasing efficiency, lowering costs and helping build a greener planet. All this while reinvigorating its own campuses, India and Germany, reshaping the future of manufacturing together. Patents filed 3,000 plus engineers, one vision to offer game-changing advanced simulation solutions. Can accident scenarios be reconstructed? Yes. Can high-end seating comfort be evaluated? Yes. With the next-gen mathematical human body model, a virtual human that has bones, internal organs, ligaments and muscles that reacts like a human being and helps predict injury when placed in a car crash simulation building real life safety achieving unreal horizons Germany and India redefining the automobile tomorrow together
and GND foray into global markets together. Munich based world leader in banknote processing system. 49 plus subsidiaries, joint ventures across 30 countries. TCS re engineers existing banknote processing system. Establishes local supplier ecosystems. Delivers product sustenance and manufacturing services. 40% improvement in processing throughput. Making in India. Taking to the global market together. Infineon E-Validation Today, a German national's electronic ID card or a resident's e-permit, e-health card granted in Germany, validated at one location in India at Infineon Technologies Bangalore. A 15-member team creates an impact, not only for Germany, for the world over. Internet of Things IoT at Home A dream close to realization But an outsider gaining unauthorized access to home devices? A nightmare Authenticating every device entering the IoT ecosystem Is it possible? Yes A 10-member team in Bangalore Making it happen To ensure safety for tomorrow together For over 20 years, Siemens India R&D teams have been designing products for global markets. Today, 4,000 plus colleagues at Siemens are shaping the future with passion to electrify, automate and digitalize the world, enabling a future where practitioners and patients advance healthcare together as one virtual team for better outcomes while using big data to improve efficiencies creating a tomorrow where electrical grids are smarter to ensure buildings industries and cities run sustainably while harnessing energy in the wind more efficiently exemplifying how our two countries create a more sustainable tomorrow for a better world together Scient Limited 10 plus years of engagement with German aviation industry multi-million euros of business from cabin design support to manufacturing in India made possible ending security lapses in the air made possible cameras recording in-flight happenings made possible Live view inside aircraft made possible. When somewhere someone wished for mood lighting on long haul flights, Scient engineers in India and the German partner collaborated and made it possible. From German aviation software and design partner to a strategic partner, 
transforming the future of aviation together. Good afternoon uh, to every one of you. I'm honored to welcome uh, Her Excellency, Dr. Uh, Angela Merkel, German Federal Chancellor, and Honorable Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi. I would also like to welcome the German business delegation who have uh, joined us in Bangalore today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, again, a very warm welcome to all of you. Strong and sustainable uh, part, uh, partnerships are built on uh, bedrock of um, complementing strength and opportunities. Uh, India's partnership with uh, Germany is built on strong foundation of research and collaboration. Both um, countries share a strength of partnership that expands across multitude of areas. In this brief talk, uh, I would like to share with you five key messages in, um, to accelerate this partnership. Sri Narendra Modi uh, at the Hanover Fair talked about the three Ds of India. He talked about democracy, demography, and demand. Together with the three Ds of India, Germany thrust into Industry 4.0. Uh, we can look uh, to a new partnership for, uh, digital, for a digitized and sustainable future, and hence our theme for uh, this particular conclave is digitizing tomorrow together. The second point I'd like to make is uh, India today provides an untapped opportunity to global companies to design in India, make in India, and make it happen in India. Combined with the digital India, skills India, smart cities, startup India, the projects are all very large in scope and transformational, and as such, they provide the right platform for German companies and Indian companies to work together. NASCOM, where I serve as the chairman of the uh, board now, represents the technology industry in India, an industry that has reshaped the dreams of middle class of India and helped it emerge in the global scenario. Our members have developed some of the most technologically advanced and mission critical applications for uh, cooperation throughout the world, including several socially impactful systems. We actually showcased uh, to um, Chancellor Merkel and the Honorable Prime Minister six of those uh, initiatives um, uh, earlier uh, uh, today. I would urge the business delegations from, the Germany, uh, from Germany to expand the partnership with India across manufacturing, services, digital engineering, and creating solutions um, in the world. The key differentiator is um, every global scenario will uh, be education and skills. Companies um, have uh, built their R&D capabilities as well as expertise in data analytics and product design. 
India's demographic uh, dividend can be um, leveraged to complement the nations which have an aging population. At the same time, vocational training systems of Germany is considered among the best in the world, and we can join hands and work together. <laughs> Lastly, in today's globalized uh, world, I would request the support from Chancellor Merkel in addressing some of the key issues on labor mobility uh, for skilled professionals, recognition of India as a data secure nation, and simplification of export uh, control regime to import high technology equipment into India. I now have the honor uh, to invite German Federal Chancellor, Her Excellency Dr. Angela Merkel, to address the gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Merkel has been the Chancellor of Germany since 2005 and the leader of the Christian Democratic Union since 2000. Mrs. Merkel has been named several times in Time 100. Uh, in May 2015, she has been named the most powerful woman in the world for a record of ninth time by Forbes. Madam Chancellor, may I request you to address the gathering and let's join our hands to welcome her. Sehr geehrter Herr Premierminister, sehr geehrter Herr Chandra Schicker, sehr geehrter Herr Reddy, sehr geehrter Herr Professor Otto, meine Damen und Herren. Dass wir in, zu diesem Wirtschaftsforum in Bangalore zusammenkommen, über, um über deutsch-indische Wirtschafts- und Wissenschaftskooperation zu sprechen, das ist eine hervorragende Idee und ich möchte den Organisatoren ganz herzlich danken. Hier im asiatischen Silicon Valley, wie Bangalore ja auch genannt wird, ist die enge Zusammenarbeit unserer Länder mit Händen zu greifen. Hier findet deutsche Ingenieurkompetenz und indische IT-Brillanz zueinander und ergänzen sich perfekt. Davon konnten wir uns auch während unseres Besuchs im Innovationszentrum von Bosch überzeugen. Insgesamt sind rund 170 deutsche Unternehmen in Bangalore vertreten, Sie erweisen sich als wichtiger und verlässlicher Motor der wissenschaftlichen Entwicklung in dieser Region. Und in diesem Engagement spiegelt sich zugleich die hohe Bedeutung der deutsch-indischen Wirtschaftsbeziehungen. Deutschland ist Indiens wichtigster Handelspartner in der Europäischen Union. Unser bilaterales Handelsvolumen lag im vergangenen Jahr bei rund 16 Milliarden Euro. Nach eher verhaltenen Jahren verspricht 2015 wieder ein Jahr der Zuwächse zu werden. In den ersten sieben Monaten nahmen die deutschen Importe um über 8 Prozent zu, unsere Exporte nach Indien sogar um fast 18 Prozent gegenüber dem Vorjahreszeitraum. Indien ist für Deutschland nicht nur als Handelspartner, sondern auch als Investitionspartner sehr gefragt. Mehr als 1.600 deutsche Unternehmen sind hierzulande aktiv, Manche sind es sogar schon länger als 100 Jahre. Und mit einem Bestand von insgesamt fast 10 Milliarden Euro zählt Deutschland zu den wichtigsten Direktinvestoren in Indien. Unsere Unternehmen wissen die Standortvorteile hier in Indien zu schätzen, ein großer Markt, ein hohes Wachstumspotenzial und eine beeindruckende Innovationsfähigkeit. Dass das Interesse am weiteren Ausbau unserer Wirtschaftsbeziehungen groß ist, das unterstreichen die Spitzenvertreter namhafter deutscher Unternehmen, die mich auf dieser Reise begleiten. Es kommt auch nicht von ungefähr, dass Indien nach 2006 auch 2015 wieder Partnerland der weltweit bedeutendsten Industriemesse in Hannover war. Dies bringt die hervorragenden Möglichkeiten einer engen Zusammenarbeit in den, Branchen zu in den Branchen zum Ausdruck, für die ja auch Bangalore steht. Branchen, die mit Digitalisierung, Vernetzung und Industrie 4.0 zu tun haben. Der Wertschöpfungsanteil der Industrie in Deutschland ist mit über 22 Prozent 
nicht nur seit vielen Jahren stabil, sondern im weltweiten Vergleich auch relativ hoch. Der Erfolg der deutschen Industrie war und ist nur möglich durch die ausgeprägte Internationalisierung. Und diese setzt eine entsprechend hohe Innovationsfähigkeit voraus. Wir müssen unsere Produkte und Verfahren immer wieder auf den neuesten technologischen Stand bringen oder noch besser immer wieder Vorreiter sein. Schon allein im Begriff vernetzte Industrie klingt die Aufgabe an, dass wir verschiedene Kompetenzen bündeln müssen. Und genau dem dient auch unsere Plattform Industrie 4.0. Sie bringt alle maßgeblichen Akteure aus Wirtschaft, Wissenschaft, Gewerkschaften und Politik in Deutschland zusammen, um die Industrie 4.0 zu einer Erfolgsgeschichte zu machen. Das erfordert natürlich nicht nur überzeugende Antworten auf technologische Fragen, sondern genauso auf Fragen der Sicherheit und der Standardisierung, auf Fragen der rechtlichen Rahmenbedingungen und auf Fragen der Veränderungen in der Arbeitswelt. Indien verfügt bekanntermaßen über hohe IT-Kompetenzen und viel Erfahrung. Lassen Sie uns daher das Know-how und die Stärken unserer beiden Länder noch mehr zusammenführen, um uns gemeinsam neue Türen zum Erfolg im digitalen Zeitalter zu öffnen. Aber auch über IT und Industrie 4.0 hinaus bieten sich unseren beiden Ländern weitere gute Kooperationsmöglichkeiten. Ich denke dabei auch an große Infrastrukturprojekte, zum Beispiel im Bahnbereich, zur Stadtentwicklung und Energieversorgung. Ob es etwa um Mobilität insgesamt oder auch um, um Dienstleistungen und Berufsbildung geht, von einer engen Zusammenarbeit können wir gleichermaßen profitieren, egal ob es and industry 4.0. Our two countries have tremendous opportunities for cooperation. I'm thinking here particularly of infrastructure projects, for example, um, in the rail sector or in um, urban development, energy supply, be it about mobility services, vocational training, both sides can surely benefit from a closer cooperation, no matter uh, whether it be digitization or uh, the areas I just mentioned. So it is a very good thing that the uh, KFW Banking Group supports investments in India. And let me add, we will have to continue to think about possible um, investment schemes um, that our financial institutions in Germany ought to offer uh, in order to support um, such um, investments. We um, usually, when we engage um, in a business opportunity, try to um, stay there for the duration. We're interested in sustainable economic development, and this is why we have earmarked another five billion for the next four years to come. As in any other country, in India too, further economic development depends on the framework conditions that are offered to businesses, and we are therefore following with great interest the reform calls of the Indian government uh, that you embarked on and the, the Prime Minister. For example, the tendering for coal licensing were, was um, uh, newly regulated, um, the limitations of stakes for uh, foreign direct investments in a number of industries um, have been um, increased. So if these liberalization measures um, are uh, just the start for further reforms, then uh, this can actually give a very strong impetus to further investments of German company in India. Obviously, um, we are very much interested to be treated um, the same. Uh, Indian, um, German and European companies are very much interested to be, receive equal treatment with Indian uh, businesses uh, because both sides, after all, uh, benefit from fair market and competition conditions. Uh, that's essential, and this is why I would very much welcome if the negotiations on a free trade agreement between the EU and India could be resumed as quickly as possible. We talked about this yesterday. Obviously, difficult detailed issues have uh, still to be clarified, but we should not lose sight of what is most important, namely that a comprehensive agreement is of tremendous importance for the economic partnership between India and the European Union. And for Germany, I can say, uh, Indian investors are warmly welcome in Germany. Uh, please, I can we encourage you uh, to become engaged even more in Germany. Such a free trade agreement would not only pave the way for German companies to come to India, but the reverse is also true. 
you as Indian companies uh, will find excellent conditions on the ground, whereas, as you know, um, centrally located in Europe, we have very strong infrastructure, we have um, excellently qualified uh, skilled labor and also an excellent network of excellent um, research institutions. And I think that's one of the drivers, indeed, of innovation in Germany. Um, I know that uh, not only in Germany, but also here in Bangalore, uh, you uh, are interested in having a beneficial exchange between business community and science. So uh, it is not comes as no surprise that important research institutions from Germany um, are here, represented here. One example, for example, is the um, representation of the Fraunhofer Society. And yesterday we were able to see yet again that this link between um, applying or oriented research and businesses is working very well here, although you don't have such a um, established tradition as we have. But, but Bangalore is in many ways a case in point for the very good cooperation of our two countries in research and development. But obviously, um, there is always room for improvement, which is why um, we also agreed um, on cooperating even more intensively uh, during our intergovernmental consultations. So for example, work um, on the Indo-German Science Center will be further enhanced. And I can only welcome that um, a number of German and Indian universities already have entered into bilateral agreements. There are more and more Indian students that discover that in Germany you can actually uh, study um, at, um, and have excellent conditions, uh, particularly German engineering. Um, about 12,000 Indian students are enrolled at German universities, so they are among the largest group of foreign students. I'd be uh, obviously happy if um, as many of them as possible uh, could also stay on um, after they have completed their studies for a number of years in Germany, um, also because um, uh, India and Germany uh, have to face great demographic challenges, um, but of a very different kind. India needs highly skilled uh für seine Stärke in der dualen Berufsausbildung. Und ich bin sicher, dass wir unsere Erfahrungen im Rahmen der Skill India Initiative hervorragend einbringen können. Ob in Wirtschaft, Wissenschaft oder Politik, vielfältige Kontakte beleben unsere Partnerschaft zwischen Indien und Deutschland. Und wir bauen dabei auf einem gleichen Werteverständnis auf. Wir wissen um den Stellenwert von Demokratie, von Rechtsstaatlichkeit, von Marktwirtschaft. Und gemeinsam teilen wir auch eine immer größer werdende internationale Verantwortung. In den Vereinten Nationen setzen wir uns für Frieden, Sicherheit und nachhaltige Entwicklung ein. Wir sind bereit, in Zukunft noch mehr Verantwortung weltweit zu übernehmen. Und wir treten für eine Reform des Sicherheitsrats ein, in der sich auch die veränderte Weltlage im 21. Jahrhundert widerspiegelt. Wir sind gemeinsam der Überzeugung, dass 70 Jahre nach Gründung der Vereinten Nationen die Zeit dafür reif ist. Premierminister Modi und ich haben vor einer Woche in New York mit unseren Partnern in Japan und Brasilien genau darüber beraten und auch Vorschläge dazu gemacht. Im November werden wir beide uns in der Türkei beim G20-Gipfel wiedersehen. Dieses Forum hat in den vergangenen Jahren erheblich an Gewicht gewonnen. Und es kommt ja in der Tat darauf an, dass Schwellenländer und Industrieländer an einem Strang ziehen. Nur dann können wir uns wirklich dem Ziel nähern, nachhaltige und faire Wachstumsbedingungen für die Weltwirtschaft insgesamt zu schaffen. Es kann nur als gemeinsames globales Werk gelingen, die kürzlich beschlossene Agenda 2030 auch umzusetzen. Und sie ist der Leitfaden dafür, dass viele Millionen Menschen in den nächsten 15 Jahren eine bessere Perspektive für ihr Leben gewinnen können. Eines der großen Ziele ist, 2030 eine Welt ohne Hunger zu haben. Und natürlich tragen wir auch gemeinsam Verantwortung für das Weltklima. Deutschland und Indien sind sich einig in dem Ziel, die Erderwärmung auf zwei Grad zu begrenzen. Das ist notwendig, um die schlimmsten Folgen des Klimawandels abzumildern. Und deshalb müssen wir in Paris Ende des Jahres ein ehrgeiziges 
und für alle verbindliches Abkommen beschließen. Wir müssen uns auf einen Entwicklungspfad bewegen, der auf eine Dekarbonisierung im Laufe dieses Jahrhunderts zielt. Und das gelingt uns nur, wenn alle Staaten ihren Beitrag dazu leisten, wenn wir uns gegenseitig unterstützen, allerdings auch wissen, dass die Industrieländer hier eine höhere Verantwortung haben. Ein Kernelement dabei ist der zugesagte Beitrag der Industrieländer zur Klimafinanzierung. Dieses, diese Klimafinanzierung ist für ärmere Staaten von besonderer Bedeutung. Und wir haben unsere Bereitschaft dazu auf dem G7-Gipfel in Deutschland nochmals bekräftigt. Wir haben versprochen, ab 2020 100 Milliarden, Euro, 100 Milliarden Dollar jedes Jahr zur Verfügung zu stellen, weltweit, aus staatlichen und privaten Quellen. Deutschland steht auch gerne bereit, Indien auf seinem Weg zu mehr Energieeffizienz und zu mehr erneuerbaren Energien zu begleiten. Wir können gemeinsam moderne Technologien für klimafreundliche Entwicklungen auch vorantreiben. In Deutschland selbst wollen wir bis zum Jahr 2050 unseren Anteil am Strom aus erneuerbaren Energien Schritt für Schritt auf 80 Prozent steigern. Damit leisten wir einen wichtigen nationalen Beitrag zum Klimaschutz und wir setzen international auch Maßstäbe, indem wir zeigen, ökonomische und ökologische Ziele lassen sich gut miteinander vereinbaren. Wir verzichten nicht auf Wohlstand, sondern erwirtschaften ihn nur auf andere Weise. Mit zunehmendem wirtschaftlichen Gewicht kommen natürlich den Ländern der Asien-Pazifik-Region mehr internationale Verantwortung zu, gerade auch, was die entscheidenden Voraussetzungen für nachhaltige Entwicklung anbelangt, Frieden, Sicherheit und Stabilität. Leider lässt die sicherheitspolitische Lage auch in der asiatischen Region zu wünschen übrig. Ich erinnere an die Lage, showing that uh, economic and um, environmental goals can be made compatible. We are not um, actually uh, foregoing prosperity, but we are actually managing to achieve prosperity in different ways. And uh, the increasing economic weight of uh, the countries of uh, the Asian Pacific region obviously also means that they shoulder more and more international responsibility. Unfortunately, also as regards um, the sustainable development in peace, security and stability. Unfortunately, the security and political situation in the Asian region um, is uh, also one that is fragile. Let me just remind you of the Korean Peninsula and territorial conflicts in the East and South China Sea. Free and secure uh, maritime routes in the Asian Pacific region uh, uh, actually also touch on core interests of Europe. And this is why it's important that the EU, as a security political partner, um, becomes uh, more prominent, um, starting from ASEAN as an anchor of stability. Uh, we, a regional security architecture um, is developing where India uh, is also participating. And Europe can actually be a partner in this. The security political responsibility that um, India is willing to shoulder um, also is reflected in its enhanced engagement in export control regimes uh, that serve, among other purposes, uh, non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, the fact that the country will now uh, wish to be a member in all four international export control regimes is something that we very much um, support because we see that um, as a starting point for cooperating in security areas um, more in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these examples this business forum and Indo-German intergovernmental consultations uh, make one thing very clear. Our two countries are unified in the wish to um, enhance our relations um, and uh, we have a firm wish to build on them. I very vividly remember the virtual lion um, that uh, we saw during the opening of Hanover Fair. We have been given lions by the apprentices just now and this was a very clear symbol of India's ambition and of its self-confidence as a strong economic nation. Um, while I was here in India during my visit, I did not meet a lion, but the, the Prime Minister told me where I can find them if I want to see them. Um, you don't have to be. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency. Your uh, words of uh, encouragement for uh, business and science cooperation is extremely encouraging uh, to all of us. And uh, we certainly look forward to working with uh, many more German companies 
in uh, coming years. May I now invite uh, the Honorable uh, Prime Minister uh, of India, Sri Narendra Modi, to address uh, the business community. Mr. Modi uh, understands uh, technology far better than many technology leaders in this room, and his vision of technology and its impact for India continues to energize us and do more. May I, sir? Please join your hands to welcome uh, Mr. Modi again. Your Excellency, Dr. Angela Merkel, it is a great pleasure for me to join you in Bangalore. Welcome to this speech. I fondly recall my visit to the city of Hanover and Hanover Messe in April. Fifteen states a number of CEOs and hundreds of companies from India had participated. The exposure of Hanover Messe will go a long way in shaping our vision and strategy of manufacturing. This is particularly important at a time when we are on the path of making India a global manufacturing hub. Dr. Merkel and friends, there is a tremendous potential in India-Germany economic collaboration. Germany ranks seventh among foreign investor countries in India. About 600 Indo-German joint ventures are already operating in India. However, as of now, our economic partnership remains below our full potential. We are particularly keen to develop the sectors where Germany is strong. We are working hard to create conducive condition for the same. Friends, at a time of global slowdown, India represents a bright spot for investment. We are fortunate to be sailing in the right direction. The recent data on global economic activity reinforces this assertion. However, we cannot afford to be complacent. We are committed to doing everything possible to convert this analysis into reality. With a very open and global mindset, we have worked aggressively. In the last 15 months, to make India an easy place to do business. We are committed to creating favorable conditions for business and industry because we believe that they are necessary for improving the lives of ordinary citizens in India. A recent study conducted with the help of the World Bank Group has brought out the urgency among our provincial governments on ease of doing business. They are moving hand in hand with the federal government in this direction, in a true spirit of cooperative and competitive federalism. In fact, the provincial governments have now entered into a healthy competition among themselves to ensure that a transparent, predictable, and user-friendly regulatory mechanism is quickly put in place. Friends, one of the biggest challenges in India today is to productively employ your youth. For meeting this challenge, we need to provide a huge push to manufacturing, which has stagnated at around 16% of the GDP 
for several decades in India. This percentage must reach around 25% in the short and medium term. With this in view, we have launched the Make in India initiative. To make it a success, apart from vigorous implementation of measures for ease of doing business, we have fast track approvals and clearances for industry and infrastructure. Transparent auction and allocations of spectrum and of key natural resources like coal, iron ore and other minerals in the last 15 months have created a level playing field for investors. We are aware that our domestic financial, financial resources are not sufficient to meet our needs. Therefore, to enhance the flow of foreign investments, we have liberalized the foreign direct investment regime, allowing 100% FDI in railways, enhancing the FDI limit to 49% in defense and insurance. We have also refined our FDI policy for construction and medical devices. We have rationalized a number of other FDI-related policies issues, including bringing in the concept of composite sector caps for the FPIs and other investors. We are keen to build futuristic, physical and social infrastructure. Through self-employed discipline in the management of our financial resources, we have been able to allocate more resources for infrastructure sectors. In addition, we are setting up an India Investment and Infrastructure Fund. We have targeted an annual flow of rupees 20,000 crores, which is approximately 2.7 billion euros into this fund from our own resources. We are putting in place a professional team for asset management. We have also come up with the mechanism of tax-free infrastructure bond for projects in rail, road, and irrigation sectors. There were a number of regulatory and taxation issues which were adversely impacting, impacting on the sentiments of foreign investors. We have taken very decisive steps to remove a number of long pending concerns of investors. To give you some examples, we have expedited regulatory clearances including security and environmental clearances. Across the board, we have increased the validity period of industrial licenses. We have delicensed a number of defense items and liberalized a number of restrictions like end use certificate. We have increased the validity period of defense industrial licenses up to 18 years from three years. We have clearly articulated that we will not resort to retrospective taxation and reinforce this position by not going for imposition of minimum alternate tax on FPIs. We have notified the regulations for the alternative investment funds allowing foreign investments in such funds. We have rationalized the capital gain tax regime for real estate investment trusts. We have modified the permanent establishment norms. We have also decided to defer the implementation of the general anti-avoidance rules for two years. We have introduced the GST bill in Parliament. We are hopeful 
to roll it out in 2016. We are working on a new bankruptcy court. The company law tribunal is soon going to be formed. We want to make sure that our tax regime is transparent and predictable. We are also keen to see that genuine investors and honest taxpayers get quick and fair decisions on tax matters. As a result, our initiatives, the sentiments for private investment and inflow of foreign investment have turned positive. The growth rate of our GDP is above 7%. FDI inflows have gone up by 40% compared with previous year's corresponding period. Many international financial institutions, including the World Bank, IMF, OEC, and others, are predicting even faster growth in the coming years. Moody's has upgraded the rating of India as positive. India has improved its ranking of investment attractiveness against 15 so far. Now we are at ninth place. India has also jumped 16 places on the World Economic Forum's Global Competitive Index after five years of decline in the least. Similarly, in a ranking of the top global destinations for greenfield investment, in the first half of 2015, India is at number one. Foreign Policy Magazine of USA has ranked India as number one FDI destination. Thus, just in 15 months, we have successfully restored the credibility of India in the eyes of global players. I have always said that government had no business to do business. Hence, <laughs> through PPP or otherwise, we are encouraging private investments in areas where earlier only government used to invest. We are also divesting our stake in the public sector enterprises to instill market discipline. Friends, I want to assure you that India is committed to protecting intellectual property rights of all innovators and entrepreneurs. We have taken several initiatives for transparency and online processing in IP administration. A comprehensive national IPR policy is being finalized. Last week, I myself reviewed the situation. I can say that this will be progressive and forward-looking policy. Friends, we want your active involvement in translating our dreams into reality. Our commitment and aggressiveness to achieve the goal in a faster and effective manner offers immense opportunities to German companies. These opportunities range from building 50 million houses to setting up 100 smart cities, modernization of our railway network and station to setting up of a new railway corridors, generation of 175 gigawatt of renewable energy to construction of transmission and distribution networks, national highways, bridges and metro rails, such a huge potential for creation and production will not be available in any one country. 
more importantly no one place on the earth can offer the potential for consumption on such a massive scale we are trying to power this potential through our campaigns like digital india and skill india to tap the energy fully we have launched the startup india campaign i thank nescom for becoming our active partner in this journey recently <laughs> recently we tried to ignite this energy through an interface of our youth with ecosystem of silicon valley india in fact is on the threshold of a big it revolution we are at the tipping point but technology is going to be leveraged to meet the aspirations of our 1.25 billion citizens these initiatives provide additional avenues for investment in modern technology and human resources friends ours is a country of the young and it is going to remain so for many more years there is a huge domestic market in india unlike a decade ago talented young minds in india are no longer looking merely for high paying jobs instead they have now begun taking risks and preferring to become entrepreneurs we have witnessed exponential growth in the number of startups in the recent past some of these have begun to challenge established global players to conclude i can assure you that we will open to welcome your ideas innovations and enterprises i had said in hanover and i am saying it again that we are also open to carry carry out necessary corrections in our policies and procedures i can say that never before india was so well prepared to absorb talent technology and investment from outside to our understanding the necessary condition to propel the indian economy to a high growth trajectory do exist today i am eagerly looking forward to working with you while in bangalore i must add that it is the software of india that will move the hardware across the world it is the talent of india that will master the technology it is the market of india that will motivate manufacturing therefore it makes strong business sense to be in india it makes even better business sense to make in india thank you very much thanks a lot thank you sir uh, we are indeed honored uh, to have you here uh, today listen to you one more time with all the inspiration that you bring and the energy you bring to this nation itself so thank you for giving uh, nascom an opportunity to be a part of your vision and we once again reassure you our commitment to make sure that your vision becomes a reality thank you let's give a round of applause to the honorable prime minister again thank you sir Ladies and gentlemen, um, it gives me immense pleasure to announce uh, the business-to-business -business MOUs that have been signed and are being exchanged in the presence of uh, the uh, two leaders. The first MOU is being uh, exchanged between Gujarat International Finance Tech City, or briefly it's called uh, GIFT, and Siemens to support smart urban. Uh, mobility solutions for the gift city 
May I request uh, Mr. Joe Kaser, CEO of Siemens AG, and Ajay Pandey, Managing Director, Gift City, to um, step forward and exchange the MOUs. As uh, you may know, As you may know, Gift City is uh, slated to be the hub, hub for the global finance services that is expected to provide direct employment to about 500,000 people and indirect employment for under 500,000 people. Siemens, a world leader in transportation, will collaborate to provide smart urban mobility systems in Gift City. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a big round of applause again for this uh, partnership. The next MOU uh, will be exchanged between Tata Power and Rode and Swartz to uh, collaborate in manufacturing software-defined secure radio communication systems for military applications. The partnership is a direct uh, contribution to Prime Minister Modi's flagship Make in India initiative. May I request Sri Rahul Chaudhary, CEO of Tata Power, Strategic Engineering Division, and Mr. Manfred Fishman, President of CEO of uh, Roden uh, Schwartz GmbH and CEO KG to come forward and exchange the MOUs. Congratulations. This celebrates the uh, twining of Make in India with Digital India and our theme of the morning summit of digitizing tomorrow together. The third MOU is for a joint venture between OPG Power Ventures and IBC Solar AG for development of solar PV projects to generate 1,000 megawatts of solar energy in India in the next seven years. May I request Mr. Uh, Arvind Gupta, Chairman and Managing Director of uh, OPG Power Ventures, and uh, Mr. Yosef uh, Eisenhammer, VP IBC Solar AG, to showcase their, showcase their partnership in the presence of the two leaders. Congratulations. The joint venture envisages the creation of uh, three special purpose companies and dovetails into our uh, government's Clean India and flagship program, a clean and green pathway to sustainable growth. The next MOU today is between the National Skills Development Corporation or it's briefly known as NDSC, and um, Infineon Technologies AG for skill development cooperation in electrical semiconductor production. May I request uh, Dilip Shinoy, Managing Director and CEO of uh, National Skill Development Corporation, and Mr. Um, Arunjai Mittal, board member, Infineon Technologies, to please exchange the MOUs. With 65% of India's population under the age of 35, skill development is a key priority for the Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Modi, and his government, given um, Germany's global leadership in vocational education and skilling, this partnership is a step forward in Indo-German collaboration and is a very important um, uh, sector for us. Our last MOU for today is between HMT and Fraunhofer for the collaboration in improving the design of machine tools through research and new technologies to improve industrial productivity. May I request uh, Mr. Frank Trippe, Director, Corporate um, Strategy and Internal Affairs, Fraunhofer Institute, and uh, Mr. Girish Kumar, Managing Director, HMT, to join the, and exchange the MOUs. This is an important partnership that contributes to enhancing India's manufacturing capabilities in line with the Prime Minister's, uh, Mr. Modi's, call for Make in India. We are now uh, nearing the close of this business meet, and may I now uh, invite Professor Boris Otto, head of uh, Fraunhofer Innovation Center for Logistics and Information Technology, it's called FILIT, to uh, deliver the closing remarks. Professor uh, Otto's work uh, focuses 
on um, uh, leading edge areas of research and innovation, including Industry 4.0, a segment that Indian industry is uh, keen to partner and collaborate with uh, Germany. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Honorable Federal Chancellor Mrs. Merkel, Honorable Prime Minister of India Mr. Modi, I'd like to take the opportunity to summarize briefly the findings, the key points of the discussion that we had earlier on this morning. The key theme of this summit is digitizing tomorrow together. And we all agreed in the panel that digitization means changes to the societies, to the economies of our two countries, but of course also to the industrial enterprise. It means changes to the products and services that we offer in the future, but also changes to the way we manufacture and the way we organize our supply chains. To cope with these changes, it is heavily required that we think production engineering and information technology together. And this is in our mutual interest because it brings together two complementary strengths of our countries, of our economies. But how can we achieve that? Well, the good thing is we do not need to start from scratch. We all agreed in our panel discussion that what is required is a digital transformation. And with Industry 4.0, in particular also with the work around the platform Industry 4.0 in Germany, we already have a blueprint that allows us to embark on this digital transformation. Furthermore, we do not need to start from scratch in our collaboration. Fraunhofer has been in India for several years, and together with our strong Indian partners, we can collaborate and embark on this digital transformation together. Let me also address another point that allows us to make this endeavor um, very, uh, pretty much concrete. As we all know, um, key to success in digital transformation is data. And that is also why we recently launched a strategic initiative that we refer to as the industrial data space. The industrial data space supports companies in the secure exchange and the efficient combination in, big, in business ecosystems and thus enables success in the digital world. As I have the honor to lead the Fraunhofer activities towards the industrial data space, I see it as a great chance for collaboration. It allows us, uh, as said before, to bring together the two strengths of our economies, of our industries, for the better of the two of us. Also in the panel, we agreed that there are great opportunities ahead of us, and we all agreed that we should pursue them together, and we definitely agreed that the time is right now to do so. And with these brief remarks, I would like to conclude this convention. I would like to thank all of you for your attention and particularly for your contribution. And I'm personally looking forward to the collaboration in the future. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, um, as um, we come to an end of this program on behalf of NASCOM. I take this opportunity to thank uh, Her Excellency Angela Merkel, German Federal Chancellor, and Honorable uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, other dignitaries who are present here today, all, all participants and the media. Uh, it was heartening to be a part of this momentous discussion today, and I go back uh, with a sense of tremendous confidence that indeed two great nations of Germany and India or on the cusp of accelerating our partnership to a new level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. May I request, due to security protocol issues, so I would request people to be seated till uh, the two premiers leave the premise. Thank you for your kind cooperation.
for your convenience, ladies and gentlemen, may I request all of you to please uh, leave the handset, uh, the headsets on the chair itself. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now request you to please join us for lunch at Jamawar on the ground floor. Jamawar on the ground floor. Thank you very much. <laughs>